In the last video, we talked about the major components of Linux and how it comprises three layers, the user space, the kernel, and the hardware. And we talked about how the kernel is the core of the Linux operating system, and its main responsibility is to handle processes. In this video, we're going to talk about the shell because it's one of the most important programs in Linux. The shell is basically your interface to the Linux kernel. And as I mentioned in the last video, it resides in this top layer in the user space. So again, what is the shell? Well, when we talk about the shell, we are really talking about the command line. They are one and the same. And what is the shell? It's a program that basically will take your keyboard commands and pass them on to the kernel where they will be executed. That's all it really does. It's your way to interface to the kernel. And when Linux is started up, the shell is also started up as well. If there's a problem with the shell, Linux is probably not going to start. Now, how do you interact with a shell? Well, usually you interact with the shell with a terminal emulator. And we're going to fire that up in a minute to issue our first commands to the kernel. Now, before we get started, you can use any version of Linux that you want. These commands and concepts are all the same throughout the different Linux distributions. Now, if you do not have a version of Linux installed, that's okay because I've made some videos how to install Ubuntu Linux. And I will put the links to those videos in the description of this video. So what I want you to do is go ahead and launch your terminal emulator. And you can see here, I've already got it open. Now, when you first fire up the terminal emulator, you're going to get a prompt that looks something like this. This is the shell prompt. And this is very similar to the command prompt in Windows, if you've used that before. Now, the shell prompt can look different depending on the version of Linux you have, but it's basically the same concept across the different Linux distributions. So what you'll get again is the shell prompt. Now, the first part of this prompt is the user that you're logged in as. And you can see here I'm logged in as Ernie. That's the user. And I'm logged in as a normal user. Now, if you were logged in as root, and you can see right here at the top, it says to run a command as administrator, user root. So if I was logged in as root, it would say root at Ernie hyphen virtual box. But I'm logged in just as a normal user and the normal user is Ernie. And that has less permissions and rights than the root user. And usually when you log into Linux, you will come in as a normal user, unless you have a very specific reason to go in as root. And we'll talk about the different users in Linux in later videos. So again, I'm logged in as Ernie, and again, I'm logged in as a normal user. Now after the username comes the Linux machine that you are connected to. And in this case, it's local and it's Ernie hyphen virtual box. Now it's possible you could be remoting into another machine. And if that was the case, it would show that machine right here. But again, this is local, so it shows my local virtual box name. Now, depending on the Linux version that you have, you may see a tilde sign right here. And that represents the home directory. And we'll actually talk about this in the next video. And then the final thing is the dollar sign. And this always comes at the end of the prompt. The dollar sign means that we are logged in as a normal user. That is the account we are using. Now, if you were logged in as an administrator, you would likely see a hash sign here rather than the dollar sign. But again, we're not logged in as the root user, so that is why we see the dollar sign. So we're ready to issue our very first command. So what I want you to type in is ls. And this basically will list the contents of the current directory that we're in. So go ahead and type in ls and you can see the results. Now, depending on the Linux version that you have, some of the folders will be color coded. Now, the ones in blue are directories. Now, in Linux, they call these directories. In Microsoft, they call them folders, but they are one in the same. So we're going to go ahead and stick with the proper lingo and we're going to call them directories. So you can see here we've got a desktop directory, we've got a downloads directory, we've got a music directory and on and on. And in white, we've actually got a file that is called examples.desktop. Now, if you want to long view of this, you can type in ls hyphen l and go ahead and hit enter and you can see we've got quite a bit of information. I actually prefer this view, but some people prefer the condensed view. So again here we're issuing some of our very first commands. The ls command is one of the most widely used commands in Linux, so get used to it. We're going to be using it a lot throughout this series. Now I do want to point out that these commands are case sensitive. So for instance, if we put a capital L here, and a lowercase s, it's not going to be recognized and you'll get this message command not found. So just keep that in mind. These commands are 
case sensitive. Now, in order to list all of the options for the ls command, you can type in something before each command, and that is man. That actually stands for manual. And then you type in the particular command that you want to pull up the manual for. And in this case, we're going to hit ls. And this is very important because this will give you all of the options for that particular command. So if we hit enter here, you can see here we're pulling up the manual and it's going to give us all of the options. Now to scroll through the pages, you simply hit spacebar and we can go all the way to the end here. Once you get to the end, you can just press Q to quit and it takes us back to the shell prompt. Now let's say you wanted to clear the screen. You simply type in the clear command and everything is cleared. And to exit the terminal, you just type in exit and the terminal is now closed. Okay, that's gonna do it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're gonna talk about directories in Linux and we're gonna issue more commands. See you then.